roofs. What building would be complete without them? The roofs and the rafters correspond to walls and wall connectors. In other words, roofs connect into rafters. So let's get started. So today we're going to be building a couple of different pieces that make up the roof system. There's two basic components. There is the rafter piece that contains also this piece of flashing. This is what is a connection point between the rafter and the roof pieces and makes variable width roofs possible. And this is a roof piece. And this is just a piece of foam with some other stuff we're gonna do a little later. This actually fits in this groove here. And the way it works is that this is actually held in place just by, you know, by friction. So it's basically held in there kind of by the springy action of the, the roof piece itself. And with this system, you can connect multiple pieces together like this and you can build roofs. So as always, we start out with some templates. Uh, the first one is going to be for making shingles and it looks like this. This piece has two sides to it. This side here has all the individual spaces in between our shingles to make it very fast and easy to trace these onto some strips of shingles that we're going to be making. And this over here, the dashed lines are for you to lay out the shingles when they're finally done onto the roof sections and make that fast and easy. Now, when this is uh, cut out and glued onto the cardboard, it looks like this. Now, mine is obviously a little bit more used than, than yours will be, but you'll notice that I've cut out the white sections all down here. These also, these, these would be the white notches on yours, uh, but this is this is my first experimental one and I still use it. So, um, so yeah, we're gonna use this first and we're gonna make that. And along with this, we're also gonna be making templates for the rafter pieces and they look like this. The way it's laid out here is the most efficient use of foam. It takes up the least amount of space and also ensures that you have all the components. This is actually four individual components that are gonna make up our rafter piece. It's the two sides and it's the shims that we're gonna glue onto these arch pieces here as well to thicken up the layer that, that the roof pieces sit on in here. Uh, you can see there's that shim on there, which doubles the width of the connection point. This gives it a little bit more play and a little bit more uh, leeway in, in things being a little bit off size. It also gives it a more firm connection. And you also notice on these, there's notches out here, just basically wherever there's white areas, you're gonna cut those out. But when you have these greenish white areas here, you're gonna leave those plate pieces in there. And that's just to sort of keep this entire template together so you can quickly trace it onto your phone. And last but not least, we're gonna make some templates for the in tongue interior piece. They're basically just solid pieces of foam and they're pretty straightforward to do, just like the other interior pieces on the walls that we've done in the past. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to cut some strips of paper to make our shingles. The strips of paper are half inch wide and they become the body of our shingle. So basically strips like this. If you have a paper cutter, it's really fast and easy to do this, obviously, but I do not. And I don't feel like spending the money buy ones. So we're gonna make our paper cutter out of some masking tape. I got this from Dollar Tree and a metal ruler preferably. You can use a plastic one, but you probably wanna try it for metal if you, if you have one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna first make the backstop for our cutter. And this is gonna determine the width of each one of our pieces of paper. So that's the backstop. And then we're going to make some segments here to lift up the ruler so we can put our our paper underneath it. So I'm gonna basically be using just regular photocopy paper that you would get, you know, at like Office Depot or whatever. And I'm just gonna use it here to set the width. And I wanna have a little bit of space on each side so it's easier to sort of slide in the sheets. And I'm gonna build up these sides as well. The goal here is to make a gap underneath the ruler where we can slide in a few sheets of paper to cut it very quickly and easily. I do like three or four here. Now we want our pieces of paper to be a half inch uh, wide. So we're gonna mark out a half inch from our backstop. And we're gonna lay down our ruler at those marks. Now don't worry if it's not totally perfect, it's okay. It just has to be close. Again, like with everything with Torino, it, you have to be careful about your accuracy, but it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Everything kind of takes into consideration that you may not measure everything great each and every time. So we're just gonna take and mount our ruler like that. And then we're gonna take a few sheets. I think they usually do about three. 
And you'll notice you just slide it in like this. And then we take our utility knife, make sure it's nice and sharp, and just cut them out. Obviously, you're gonna to wanna to do this on a surface you can cut on, like a cutting board. I have a piece of glass on here, so that's why this is easy to do. And in this way, you can actually make a lot of these paper strips really, really fast. And you don't need to buy an expensive piece of equipment to do it. And when you're done with your paper cutter, you just peel it off and throw it out. It's a little bit off, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. You see that it's subtly different widths on both ends, and that's causing the end of the paper to be a little crooked now, but again, it doesn't matter at all. And usually what I do is I'll do, you know, I'll do like 50 sheets of paper at a time. Just sit here and kind of do this for 10 minutes. And in that way you get a good amount of strips really, really fast. And then it's on to making our bundles of shingles. We're gonna take about 10 of them and we're gonna make a bundle of what is going to be the shingles. And the shingles are gonna basically be long strips of masking tape with this backing of paper on it. And we're gonna start doing that by laying out first just a bottom piece of masking tape. This is gonna be the bottom of the bundle of, of uh, shingles. And then onto that, we're going to stack uh, strips of these paper strips and masking tape on top of it. And I'm just attaching that paper onto the bottom half of the masking tape. Now, after I got the first one down there, I'd like to mark off where the, where the paper is on my surface because it makes it a lot easier to sort of keep them flush to each other so they're laying right on top of each other all the different strips and then it's just a matter of laying them on there i usually do 10 sheets um, and you'll see why you don't want to go much thicker than that in the second when we go to actually make the individual shingles and all you want to do is make sure your masking tape is longer then your marks and your paper. And once you've got your 10 sheets strips on there, you're gonna come out with a packet that looks like this. And you'll notice you have this excess of mask tape on the end. We're actually gonna use that and bend it or wrap it around. And this just sort of holds all those kind of pieces in place when we do our next little bit here. Uh, another thing I also like to do, because what I'll do is I'll, a lot of times I'll prep these and store them. Uh, like I'll have, you know, I'll make a dozen of these to have laying around. So whenever I want to do roofs, I can just pull them out. Um, but this backside is sticky. So what I like to do is actually I like to put a piece of masking tape over that in the opposite, you know, glue to glue side. So that way they don't get stuck on everything when they're laying around. So we're going to take our shingle template and we're going to take a pencil with a thin tip because we're going to use this pencil. Now we're going to lay this over the paper strips, which you can still see are kind of in there. So we're just going to quickly line these up, draw the lines in the slots. There you go. And then it's time to cut out those individual shingles. And we're gonna use a pair of wire cutters. You can get a set of these at the Dollar Tree for a buck. And this makes it super fast and easy to cut these shingles. And if you notice, there's like a plane on these, on the wire cutters, like one side is flush. That'll always show you exactly where the cut is. The other side, if you, if you use them this way, you can't tell because there you have this indentation. So I usually like to turn them this way. So the flush side is very apparent to me when I'm cutting. And we're just gonna go down here. Now I'm only cutting the first half. I'm cutting to the edge of the paper on here on the master tape. I'm not cutting the masking tape bit that has no paper on it. Then you just go down the whole way like this. And it's okay if they're not perfect. In fact, it's probably better if they're not perfect. Little variation is always good. And once you've got the whole thing cut out like this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make these shingles a little bit more irregular. Like right now they're all perfectly flush to each other. It doesn't look very fun or fanciful. So I like to actually cut them on an angle. What I'll do is I'll go down the row, kind of do every other one or every second one. And when I get to the end, I just turn it over to make it really easy to cut the other ones that I didn't cut before without having to really move anything. Or Because if I did this this way, trying to cut that angle, I'd have to like go in like this or do it like this. But if I just turn it over, it becomes really super fast and easy. And in this way, now we're gonna have about over a hundred inches worth of shingles. And it takes, I mean, it, it takes a few minutes to do. Uh, which is great. You can really mass produce shingles really fast. So now what I'll usually do is I'll leave them like this and I'll make some bunches of packets like this and set them aside. And then I'll have them for whenever I want to make roofs. 
The other great thing about using this masking tape for our shingles is that it is, it's off-white. So again, we can use a lot of the same techniques that we use for the foam, which rely on the fact that the foam is white. We can do like a wash on top of this to get this type of an effect of having this depth and shade on it just from one single coat of paint. And what's nice about it is we get these natural highlights from the off-white masking tape. So I'm going to show you how to make this one by one piece and we're going to start with the interior tongue piece which is going to look like this in the end. This is already painted. I like to do that a lot if I'm going to do a different color in the middle. You don't have to. Um, but what I like to do is I also like to mass produce these. So this is a strip of foam board that I've already put masking tape on both sides of because the nice thing about these is that when you do it this way you can use the most of your foam with the least amount of waste and the least amount of cuts and you can make a lot of these in one fell swoop. And what's also very cool about this is you can basically trace these out on here and then come back and cut out the bits that you don't need, but keep them all attached. And then you can paint them all in one fell swoop. So you save a lot of time on the painting end of things because you're not painting individual pieces. You're literally just stroking on all the paint for these uh, tongue pieces. Uh, all I want to really remove is that's just these little bits here, and that's easy enough to do. Just as an example, I'll do this one here. And now they'll stay together, and we can still paint them. And I can get that coat of paint on here. This is, again, the equal parts of water, PVA, glue, and acrylic paint, which gives them a little bit of strength before I even glue them together, which is nice. And then I can also do that little color accent if I like and it makes it super easy to paint it as opposed to trying to get my brush in there to do that you know after the fact and I do something similar for the rafter pieces themselves as well here I've you can see I've started one so we're just going to take our template here and I'm going to match it up to the previous one I drew here now you're going to want to make sure you get those notches drawn in you see these here because um, that's going to inform where we're going to cut out these different pieces a little later on there's one notch, one notch, another notch. I just like to do them first so I don't forget. And you're also going to want to do this middle section here. That's the where we're going to cut them to split them into the separate pieces. So once we have these, now again, you can do long strips of these. Um, I'm just going to show you with these two here. And I'm going to draw in the details and extend the lines that we need to. We're gonna extend the lines here in the middle because we know we're gonna cut these down. And across here, that's gonna complete the top of our pieces. And then it's time to decorate them. I usually do this first here as well because I can literally just sit and draw in all my different materials. Like these are all gonna be made of wood. So instead of cutting these out in individual pieces and drawing out my lines and bolts, I can literally just do it in long swoops like this. And now imagine if I had a whole strip of these, I could literally do the entire things all in one stroke and it goes really, really fast that way. Um, so I'm not wasting time uh, doing that. And then I also do the same thing on the outsides here. Now you'll notice I didn't texture on this arch part here and that's because these shims are gonna lay on top of there anyway, so it doesn't matter, you're never gonna see it. And then just give this a little bit of texture. Like that. And I like to do bolts on the outside of these shims. I'm gonna do five. Just like that. Now I'm not gonna cut these apart, but I'm gonna leave them connected here because that way I can paint them all at once. But I am gonna take out the areas that we're not gonna need, which is all these voids. You can kind of see where they are. There's obviously a void there. And this piece is only connecting the shim to this, to the interior piece, and those, so we're not gonna need that either. As a general rule of thumb, when you're when you're making things and you're sort of doing mass production, you're always going to be most efficient if you break down your actions into the same motions over and over again. And that's a lot of the reason why I do things the way I do it. Like I would 
take and trace out 20 of these because by the time I'm done tracing the first two or three, I'll be on autopilot for the rest and they'll be get faster and faster and faster as I trace. Same thing with cutting out all these pieces in, in between what I'm going to keep. I'm going to do them all at once because I will get faster and faster at it because I'm repeating that same motion again and again. Breaking down steps into these kinds of assembly line motions really pays dividends in time and all in efficiency and also in quality. You'll get better at it as you do it more. Uh, so here's my piece ready for paint. My goal with painting it when it's like this is to get into these little crevices, especially in here, because that's the hardest thing to paint later on. And if I do it now, it's easy. Like I don't have to think about it. I'll just stick the paintbrush in there and wrap it around. Um, but if I'm trying to do it after the fact here, it's a real pain in the neck and it's going to take a lot more time. So it's more time efficient to really spend the time to get these little areas that are going to be hard to paint later to get those uh, covered with our paint uh, right now. And uh, once it is painted, we're just going to take and cut out the individual pieces and then glue them together. First is the easy one is I usually also keep them in their own sets. So that way it's just easy. Like that's one set. This is another set. Now we have our little notches here that I'll show you where you need to cut. Here's another notch and up here. And down the center. And then we have the notch at the top here. So then we have our four pieces. We have this shim is going to go on here, and this shim is going to go on there. And you can kind of just sort of test fit them. They need to be flush on the end here and flush on the top, and be pretty much the same contour as this. So that looks pretty good. And just like this. Now imagine these will be painted. Uh, I'm just showing you on this because um, this way you can see it more clearly. So we're going to add a little hot glue onto here. There's one. So once you have those, we're going to take and put that together with our little tongue piece. So these are a little different than when we've put the tongues in for the wall pieces. This one is actually going to be flush on the front of the piece, which is unusual. The goal here is to have it set down the correct depth and we'll get that for free because we're using this terrain tile. And then it's going to be flush on the front like that. What we want to be sure of is that this area back here has enough depth to accept a connector piece. So you can see right now it's a little shallow, but so what we want to do is we want to make sure we kind of move it forward enough that we have room for a connector to sit there. So for instance, if we have a simple straight connector, it will be able to sit in there and still have something to grab onto. And you can see it's a little off in the front here and that's, you know, human error. That's fine. We can fix that later. Now the other thing you want to make sure of is on the top that the depth is, is deep enough. Like you want the depth on the top to be the same as, as the depth on the bottom. Like it should be down as far. This is so when you put one piece on top of each other, they have enough room for that tongue piece to sit in there comfortably, just like that. And we're gonna put some hot glue on here. And remember, you don't wanna put any hot glue on the edge here because that's where the female part of your connection point is. Just like that. Put this down. What I like to do usually is I'll move it back the amount of the connection point. So, you know, that's looking pretty good right there. Let's try that. And so you can see here, I'm doing it so there's enough room for the connection and the back of the piece is flush with the end of the square. That's kind of an easy way to kind of make sure everything's lined up the way you want it to. There we go. That's good. You can see it's a little off on the front here, but we'll fix that in a second. And then we're going to check on the other piece and make sure that looks uh, right. Okay. That's looking pretty good. And then we're going to glue on the other side. Again, I'm going to lay it flush to the back there. It makes it easy to make sure that they are flush to each other. There we go. Piece of cake. So here's a piece that I painted off camera. Obviously you'll see there's a lot of paint missing, but importantly, the paint in here is all there. 
the parts that are really hard to paint later. And also I got the shim kind of part painted and the, and the face of it. So the nice thing about this is one, you get those hard to reach areas. So you don't have to spend a lot of time on doing those after the fact. And you get one layer of paint, glue and water mix to make this strong already. By the time we're done, it's gonna have two coats and it's gonna be very durable. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a really good way to go. And this, this lip area here is a good size. So you can see it'll be able to fit a piece of foam. So now once they're together like this, we're going to take and we're going to notch out the piece on the front here. And that is so that you can use these roof pieces with ground tiles that don't have notches in the lips like this. If you remember from the Terreno Tavern floor tile video we did, we did some that have a solid edge on the outside here because that makes for a very nice look when you're looking at the exterior building. The problem with this is though, if you try to put one of these on the edge to hang over, because they're just gonna sit about right there, you'll see that you can't because the tongue is in the way. So uh, this, this will be more pronounced on your versions. This is the beta version of these, but there's gonna be a little notch out here in dashes where it'll show you where to cut out a piece. And you can eyeball this too. It just needs to be about a quarter inch in, basically underneath the middle of the, of the, the strut piece here. And I just cut it down like that and then score both sides just to cut through the masking tape and just peel it out. And that's it, good to go. I'm also gonna cut the front of this flush because it kind of looks a little ugly. Again, it's more for aesthetics than anything else. It's not gonna make any mechanical difference. That's better, I like that. Okay. So then it's time to make the flashing piece that's gonna go on top of here. So for the flashing, you just need some cardboard. Uh, this is some from a cereal box I had laying around. You can also use chipboard from uh, any kind of office supply place. Um, and we're gonna use this to uh, trace out and actually be the body of our flashing. So you'll notice this is how it looks. And we have this template here. You notice this template is marked with the type of uh, rafter that this flashing piece is for. Now, this the flashing width is right here. It says rafter flashing width, and the height is this. And basically, the, the, we're gonna use this, this same template later to make the roof pieces. So you can see this is for a two square wide roof, three square wide roof, and four square wide roof. Uh, but right now, we're gonna go ahead and make the flashing. I know it's gonna go to there. And this is gonna be the top. So that's gonna be our one piece of flashing. Now, while we're here, why don't we draw in, we're gonna draw in some guidelines to lay out our shingles. This will pay dividends later. It makes it really fast and easy to do it. So just kind of find a mark and put that on the bottom of the flashing and then just mark off the other ones. We're just gonna cut it out. Okay, so now we have our flashing piece, basically this piece on here. So it's then it's time to uh, take our shingle bundle and prep it so we can use it. Now it still is connected here on the ends. We don't need these connection points. We just need it from the first shingle on. So I'm gonna take my wire cutters again and cut this off and cut the other one off. Now the nice thing about this is we're gonna get some rigidity from the paper for the actual shingles and we're gonna get some stickiness from the masking tape. So all we gotta do is peel them off and put them on. And just kinda wanna gently peel them off like this. I like to kinda peel it off with my finger on top there holding it in place. Cause I've noticed it, it comes off really smooth that way. Okay, so one fell sweep. We've got a whole mess of shingles. And I'm gonna start with the one that's gonna overhang a little bit on the bottom. And then just sort of tear them off and make sure they sort of alternate. You don't wanna have them laying directly on top of each other because that's not very realistic. You wanna have the shingles sort of be off the edge, uh, off the dividers of the bottom, uh, of the shingles underneath you. So that's no good. We're gonna do a little bit more like this. Like that. Peel that off. And we're gonna clean up those edges, so don't worry about that. And when you get to the top, I attach a little bit of the masking tape to the top, and then I just fold it over the back. Just like that. And then we're gonna trim off the excess. 
all the way around. Now we're gonna add some masking tape around the border here and that's on there to make sure it's durable. Like you can put it in a box and the shingles won't get torn off. You can rummage through them, a whole bundle of them and, and mess around with them and they won't tear the shingles off. And it also makes sure that when you put um, some foam in here, this, this edge will stay sharp and will receive the foam better because you're gonna have this sort of masking tape lip that'll kind of guide it underneath. And all that border is is some masking tape. And we're gonna start with the top and bottom first. Cut off the excess. And we're gonna do the size. Now I do the sides last because that way there's less chance that the masking table get frayed from pieces rubbing underneath here. If, if I had done the opposite way, you would have a little piece of masking tape here that could be peeled up by the foam. So you wanna do the outside left and right last. And just trim off the excess. And that's one shingle piece ready to be attached and uh, painted. On yours, there'll be better markings for this. This is marked out for the center channel where we're actually gonna put this piece where it has to be glued in. So we're gonna mark that out. So now we wanna make sure that we have our shingles facing down and that the top of the flashing piece is flush with the top of the tongue piece. And we're using these guidelines to make sure that when it's glued in place, that this tongue piece lives in the middle of this channel. Like that. Flush on the top and put, on the, put it centered all the way down. And you wanna make sure you crimp, you push it in so it gets uh, curved uh, and contours to the shape of the tongue piece. And just hold that for a few seconds. Now this hot glue that's on there, that's only the first line of, of adhesion for this because what we're gonna do is when we paint it, we're gonna do full strength glue with acrylic paint, so half and half of each. And we're gonna douse this inside area here to make sure that the marriage between that cardboard and that foam is really, really strong. And uh, that works great. Okay, so there you go. Now you have one fully assembled piece uh, ready for final paint. And then it's time for the last piece of the puzzle, which is the actual roof segment. And for that, we're gonna use uh, one of our roof templates. You'll notice that uh, this template corresponds to the type of rafter that we're gonna use. And that's because this is the correct width to fit perfectly in with the rafter piece. I wanna make one that's three squares wide. And you can make four squares, and if you wanted to do longer than four squares, you can you know, mark out what four squares is on here and then add another two. I probably wouldn't go farther than six squares wide because at that point they may not sit properly and there may be too much play. So then we're just gonna trace out our, you know, like do three square wide. Now you'll notice on the roof pieces, there's no shingles here on the sides. Now you can put them there if you want, but it's sort of a waste because you will never see them. This way you're gonna save a lot of your labor by cutting down the amount of shingles you need per roof considerably. The reason we have it this way is because when these are attached, it's underneath the flashing anyway. You'll never see it. So we're gonna mark off an inch on each side as the area that we don't need shingles. And then we're gonna use our shingle template again to lay out where our shingles are gonna be. Now, usually you would do these in pairs because you're very rarely gonna use one side of the roof. Uh, I'm just gonna show you one though, so you can get an idea. And these can also be mass reduced. Like usually what I'll do is I'll do long strips of these so I can lay out all these roof shingle lines at the same time in one long one that would like a yardstick. And that way I can get the roof shingle lines on a half dozen pieces at the same time. But just for demonstration of how to do the basic techniques, I'm just gonna do it on this one. And we're gonna attach our shingles just like we did for the flashing. And just like on the flashing piece, I'll do the last one I'll kind of wrap around the top. Just like that. 
There we go. I'm gonna cut off the excess in the bottom here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the ends here in masking tape. And then we're gonna do the top and bottom pieces of the masking tape. And just like on the flashing pieces, the last pieces of masking tape are gonna be the ones on the left and the right because we wanna make sure that they are on top of these, that they are on top of these uh, pieces of masking tape. Otherwise, if you're trying to push this into underneath the flashing, it could catch this masking tape and peel it up. So we're gonna put on the left and right pieces of masking tape last. Just like that. Cut off the excess. All right, that's ready for paint. Now, if you'd like, you can actually texture the back here. You can put a little bit on the back here if you want. And it kind of give it a little bit of variation. It's up to you. You can even draw in the separate beams. Again, you're probably not going to see this a whole lot. And even if your players do, eh, you know, it's probably not going to be the wow factor in what you're setting up on your table anyway. And we're going to paint the shingle side with quick coat because that way we're going to get the natural bonus of highlights and shadows that quick coat gives us and with the added durability too. And I'm using uh, Kelly Green from Apple Barrel. This is from Walmart. You can get one of these things for like four or five bucks and it'll last a long time. And I use my big sponge brushes from Dollar Tree, which are super cheap and put on a lot of paint in a little bit amount of time. Now I'm gonna paint this first because it can ha it has a possibility that it'll drip onto the backside. And if I paint this first, then I have the opportunity to hide those sins after it's dried. So we're just gonna paint this on the front here. And when, when you do this, you're gonna wanna kinda push it in because you wanna make sure that this paint gets underneath those shingles to kinda hold them down and glue them down a little bit. And also to give the seams in between the, uh, the, the shingles some paint. Otherwise it'll come out you know, looking like masking tape. And then once I've got it all dabbed on there like that, just stroke it straight down. Done deal. And then I'll do the edges. There you go, finished. So to paint the backside, we're gonna use Strong Coat. And Strong Coat is our mixture of equal parts type on wood glue and acrylic paint with a little bit of water to make it flow. And we're gonna do that because we wanna cover up that cardboard back there. We, would, we don't wanna see all the graphics on it. And we wanna make a very nice, strong bond between the cardboard and the foam piece that it attaches onto the rafter with because that is where we're gonna be connecting everything. So I get pretty generous with this. All you wanna do is you wanna be careful that none of it seeps onto the front of your shingles, which it has a tendency to do sometimes. So just when you get to the edge, just sort of be you know conscious of that. Looks pretty good and cover up up here too. Anywhere where we have foam marrying up to other foam, I like to put this, especially for these roof pieces because they're, they're under tension all the time from the, from the foam roofs. Uh, that connect them. So we want to have this this to be as durable as we possibly can. Now for these, it's a little bit tougher because you have to have somewhere to hold it, right? But usually what I'll do is I'll kind of hold it in this area here and then I'll paint the, around the edges on the outside because I want to make sure those are green. Do that first. And then the same procedure for the shingles themselves, just dab it on. Make sure it gets nice and underneath there. And here's where you're gonna get a little paint on your fingers, but don't worry, it comes off pretty easily. Just like that. And then I'm gonna hold it in this area because you're not gonna see that anyway. And then just stroke it straight down. And look at that beautiful texture we get for free. I love that. Now the goal here is to uh, not get any of the front or the sides, which can be a little bit difficult, but I just try to kind of hold it gently in somewhere where I won't actually be touching the brown wet paint. There you go, just put that aside to dry. Now once all your pieces are dry, you can use your roofs however you see fit.
And in the next video, we're going to build the last little bit that's gonna go on top of here of our roofs, and that is the roof peaks. And they're made out of two components. We have the roof peak rafter, and then we have the roof peak uh, roofs. And they go together like this and complete our roof system. So stay tuned for that. That will be coming up in the next video. So thanks. So if you haven't already, you can get started right now on your Torino journey by downloading the Torino construction manuals at GameGearMaster.com. They are consistently rated five stars and come with a 14 day hassle-free money back guarantee. That means if Torino's not for you, no problem. You'll get your money back, no questions asked. Happy crafting. And a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com forward slash Game Gear Master. And a shout out to the architects on there who really go above and beyond. Brian Yao and William Dellinger, thank you so much. And apologies if I mispronounced your names. If you'd like to become a patron and get exclusive Trano products, go to Patreon.com forward slash Game Gear Master.